Here in the Sean Shu Lab at the Life Sciences Institute, we seek to address fundamental questions in sensory biology. Our central aim is to uncover processes through which neurons detect and respond to environmental sensory stimuli. We seek to understand how organisms perceive and interact with their environment through sensory systems. To achieve this, we employ the nematode C. elegans as a model organism. Despite the worm's small size of one millimeter and simple cylindrical body shape, most of the basic mechanisms of neuronal signaling and genes are conserved from worms to humans. Thus, C. elegans serves as an invaluable model for uncovering the basic principles of sensory biology and neural signaling. We previously discovered that C. elegans can sense airborne sound. This discovery challenged the conventional belief that lower invertebrates, aside from arthropods, are unable to sense airborne sound. Our study revealed that airborne sound physically vibrates the exterior surface of the worm, activating specialized multidendritic mechanosensory neurons, leading to their aversive behavior towards sound. However, it remained unclear how worms sense sound, a question that we explore in the current study, now published in Current Biology. Our key finding was that the elegans exhibit auditory responses that depend on the size of the sound source. When exposed to sound emitted from small speakers, the worms display aversive phonotaxis behavior in order to escape. However, as the size of the sound source increased, particularly when it became roughly three times the length of the worm, the auditory responses ceased even when the sound's frequency and intensity remain consistent. A fundamental property of sound is that as sound waves travel through a medium, their intensity or sound pressure will decay across distance. We thus wondered if sounds from different sizes of speakers would decay at different rates. To address this question, we measured sound pressure decay across distance for each speaker size. We indeed found that sounds from smaller speakers decay faster than those from larger speakers. When we modeled this sound pressure decay, it also showed that the sound produced from our smaller speakers lost their intensity faster than larger ones. As sound decay across distance, when reaching the worm, they would form a sound pressure gradient across the worm body from head to tail. We were able to confirm this using real-world measurements and mathematical modeling. To explain this phenomenon, we can compare the fluid-filled cylindrical worm to a water balloon. If pressure is evenly distributed across the balloon, there will be no observable fluid flow in response as the total fluid volume is fixed. Now, if you press one end on the balloon much harder while leaving the rest alone, fluid will flow away from the compressed end down a pressure gradient. Similarly, in our study, C. elegans response to sound is like the water balloon. Only when sound waves are concentrated at a localized spot on the worm is a pressure gradient generated, triggering fluid flow and resulting in skin vibration, which ultimately activates sensory neurons and leads to an auditory response. This study has significant ecological relevance. We consider the Seligan's natural habitat, which primarily consists of composts and rotting materials above ground. In this environment, these nematodes are vulnerable to small predators, such as small insects. These predators produce audible sound during activities such as stridulating, wind beating, or rustling. In this context, our discovery suggests that C. elegans have evolved to be sensitive to sounds from smaller sources, which could include the activities of their primary predators. Furthermore, our study highlights a phenomenon known as evolutionary convergence. This suggests that various species, including C. elegans, insects, and mammals, have independently evolved a common mechanism for auditory sensation relying on pressure gradients. In summary, our study sheds light on the remarkable auditory responses of C. elegans revealing their sensitivity to sound source size and the role of the pressure gradient in their auditory sensation. These findings not only have ecological implications, but also contribute to our broader understanding of sensory biology and potential evolutionary convergence in the mechanism of auditory sensation across species.